One of the most common reasons on why many don't want to switch to Linux is because programs they use are not natively supported. You know, small programs like Photoshop or Microsoft Office. Oh, wait a minute. If you use these programs in a professional environment, then there is often no substitute for them. But does there even need to be one? I try to install the most often named programs that keep users from switching to Linux. And let me just say that the experience was interesting. Right, so first off, there are a couple of different ways how you can run Windows software on Linux. There is the default Wine installation way, whereas you just install Wine and download apps like you would on Windows. Then there's the launcher approach with programs like Lutris, which often come with scripted templates. And then there's of course my preferred way, Bottles. Bottles is an application that allows me to create several dedicated Windows environments, so that if I ever had to remove some applications in bulk or repair an environment, not every single application is affected. Alright, so instead of telling you how everything was, let me just show you. And let's start off with Microsoft Office. First, I'm going to create a new bottle called Microsoft Office with the default application template. After the setup is finished, we're going to need a setup file. So let's head on over to the official website and download it. Now since we are on Linux and Microsoft automatically detects if your operating system is supported, we need to tell our browser to impersonate a different operating system. Press F12 on your keyboard to bring up the developers menu, find these three dots, go down to more tools, network conditions, untick the use browser default option, select Chrome Windows and refresh the website. If you have a valid Office subscription, you should now see a download button for Office. If not, then you can find them in some submenus. Alright, so back in bottles. You want to click on run executable, select the setup.exe file and the window should now appear. And here's where the problem starts. Now as of the moment of making this video, I haven't found a way to get it to display anything. However, if you click on the little Microsoft 365 icon, that is if your desktop environment shows it, then you should see that Office is actually installing in the background. But it doesn't seem to work unfortunately and I also can't seem to figure out why. The furthest I got with the installation was up till 69%, whereas the installer prompted that something went wrong. I spent many hours debugging this issue and I just couldn't figure it out. Now there are older standalone Microsoft Office versions that you can install just fine on Linux, but this isn't really a solution for many, especially if the company you work for pays for a license. So yeah, this kinda sucks. But then there's of course always the online version of Office, which I know in a professional context is pretty much unusable due to many features straight up missing, but if you're using it for yourself, then it might just be enough. Another program that is named very often is Adobe Photoshop. Now there are Photoshop versions like CS6 that work perfectly on Linux, and if you don't mind installing these old versions, then that's good. However, if you're coming from Windows and also use Photoshop professionally, then you might be interested into more recent versions. But almost exactly the same like with Office, the freaking installer just doesn't work. With the same browser agent trick like before, I downloaded the setup files and even got them to run. However, it's again a blank screen. Now in contrast to Office, this is actually functional and if you're lucky, you might actually be able to log in and start the installation. I tried it myself, but I couldn't find the right sign up method and after hours and hours of trying, I broke it a couple of times and eventually had to give up. Now again, in contrast to Office, I actually think that it might be possible to install Photoshop if Adobe didn't use this WebView 2 installer type. Now the very hacky way to install Photoshop on Linux that doesn't go through any weird scripts is to just install it in the Windows environment like a VM or a second machine and copy the files over to Linux like in this article. But this isn't really practical. This does actually work, except Adobe can't contact the licensing servers because the Creative Cloud is missing, so I started migrating it as well and I was partially successful. There seems to be one driver missing, which I probably could have fixed with enough time, but at this point I was already 8 hours in and yeah, I was just exhausted. So essentially, if you're lucky enough, you might be able to install Creative Cloud via the black window natively, or you need to copy the files from a Windows VM and get it working this way. 
Now this is not a proper solution whatsoever and it did take a long time to set up. So summarized, older versions of Photoshop or as a matter of fact all Adobe software works just fine, however more recent ones definitely no. Alright, let's move on to something more positive and something that even though it's a niche thing to do, many people want to do. Overclocking and undervolting. Now I actually don't do this myself anymore since with modern GPUs I find it to be a bit overrated. However, if you want to do it then here are some suggestions. For AMD GPUs you can use core control, which is kind of like the closest thing we have to the Radeon software on Windows. You can create several profiles, set different clock speeds for different GPU states, adjust the fan speed curve and limit the GPU power draw. Depending on your hardware, you might also be able to edit some CPU settings as well. Nvidia's counterpart to this is green with Envy, but it has a pretty huge limitation. If nothing has changed recently, then green with Envy does not work on Wayland, because Nvidia in their infinite wisdom never enabled the required modules for it. That means that if you want to tune your Nvidia GPU, you need to run an XORG session, which can have some limitations, especially with a dual or more monitor setup. Now for Intel I unfortunately didn't really find anything useful, though its market share in dedicated GPUs is kinda small anyway. Now let's move on to peripheral support. And I don't mean mice or keyboard, since I've already covered them, but more like microphones or headsets. Especially those which are advertised with blue voice or custom software. If you want to utilize a similar functionality like this, then you should definitely try out pulse effects. You can use it to set noise gates that cut out background noises when you're not speaking, set up an equalizer, compressor or whatever else you need. You can also save your settings into profiles and import them on another PC if you want to. Alright, so let's finish this off with programs that either used to be on Linux, always need to be online or are no longer maintained anymore. My best example of this is Microsoft Teams. There used to be a native client during the pandemic, but then it became pretty much unusable as it didn't get all the updates as quickly and Microsoft did drop it eventually. Whenever I run into a program like this then I honestly just install them as a progressive web app or if that's not an option as a window app. And for a lot of applications this actually makes sense since if you always need to be online anyway then having just one platform maintained is just way more efficient and you get feature parity with all users. Oh and one thing I actually forgot to talk about earlier is the Adobe Acrobat Reader which is an application that used to work on Linux. Like I installed it just last year but now I can't get the installer to work. Now the reason on why I bring this up is because a certain pattern starts to emerge, whereas the actual program works fine, but just the installer does not. Like I honestly think that not much is missing. The rendering problem of the WebView 2 windows is odd, but I think once that's out of the way and we can actually properly install the software, then we could better debug it. I tried my best to run unsupported programs on Linux and I even succeeded with Adobe. But let's be real, this is not an acceptable solution. I think that we are close, just not close enough. Well so that's that, but it was still interesting to find out how far we can go natively and hey maybe I did get a step further and gave you some ideas. So if you've liked this video then please make sure to show it with a like and also subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out when we finally crack the code. Thank you for watching and all that's left to say now is good morning, good afternoon or good evening wherever you 